What image comes to mind when you think of someone who's blessed? Is it someone who is meek or persecuted, insulted? Not for most people. Today on Living the Message, we're going to talk about what Jesus' upside-down kingdom tells us about living a truly blessed life. Hey, this is Living the Message, where we discuss how the message of Christ might dwell among us richly. I'm Pastor Eric Targe, and I'm seated here with Senior Pastor of the Moody Church, Philip Miller. Hey, Philip. Hey, Eric. How are you? Doing well. We're starting a new series. We started a new series. Yeah. It's called Upside Down Kingdom. Yep. Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount. The most famous sermon ever preached. Yeah. It's right? it, Yeah. It's in many ways. It's Jesus... Uh, launching of his whole ministry, it's his, yeah. it's his shtick, if you will, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's you know, as far as we can tell, it's everywhere he went. This is the message, the the kernel of the message yeah, that he preached. Speech. Yeah, that's right. So if you want to know Jesus, this is the place to go. And it, it all starts off with this with this really famous uh, grouping of phrases that's like everyone knows, right? It's the we call them the Beatitudes, yeah. right? Uh, which really now that that phrase Beatitude really means it's just blessed. It's it's okay. an old that's an old English word for for that that it was translated years ago, okay. but it stuck, right? So, but yeah, it's the blessed. Blessed are all these kinds of people in the kingdom of heaven, and it's a paradoxical list. Yeah. And now I, th I think before, before we hop into that, people have different mindsets when they think of the word blessed, yep. right? So some people, when they think of blessed, they think like angels descend upon them or something <laughs> like that, or right. they have a little right. halo. But like when, when we see blessed in scripture, how should we be understanding yeah. that phrase? Yeah. So that uh, word. the idea, so is, you know, in, in philosophy literature, they, they talk about who has the good life, the good who, life. who's... Okay who is blessed by God, who, who's been kissed from heaven, uh, who has it made. That's the idea okay. of blessed. So it's just who's well off, who, is, who, who has it good, who's flourishing in life, who's, who has the favor of God resting upon them. Mm -hmm. and, and I think everyone, you know, in Jesus' audience, they had an assumed list, you know. They yeah. would say, you know, well, it's obviously the guys in the big house on the hill, you know, with all the servants and all the, all the you know, the fast chariot yeah. and, uh, you know, the life that every, the posh life that everybody wants, you know, or the Pharisees, the righteous ones that God's clearly happy with them, right? Yeah. So the, the elites, the people who come out on top in life, that's who people would assume are the blessed people in life. Yeah. And Jesus upends that, turns it on its head. So like what you're saying actually transforms the way that a lot of people, I think, read the Beatitudes. Because I think a lot of people read the Beatitudes as kind of like well wishes. Like mm. there was this old, I think, Monty Python skit, maybe you remember it, <laughs> where someone, I, I, it's like there's Jesus in the background and there are people that are really, really far away trying to listen. And I remember like this, Jesus says, like someone says, what does he say? And they said, oh, he said, uh, blessed are the meek. And a person next to me goes, oh, that's nice. Good for them. They needed that. You know, the meek, they have it hard. Like it's this, this joke because it feels like, like, oh, well, Jesus is being kind to these people. But you're saying, Jesus isn't saying like, oh, I wish well upon them, but actually like, they've got it good. They really have it. Yeah. They, they've really got it good, yeah. which is just so, it's a very different way of thinking about yeah. the Beatitudes. Well, and yeah, it's kind of like, you know, we have magazines that say the, the top 50, the top 10, the top yeah. 100, and we rank... Uh, who's on the top of the heap, yeah. right, in, in life. And Jesus is saying it's actually the people you would never expect uh, who have it best. Yeah. And, it's, um, and, and he's inverting the whole, the whole way we think about it. And he's yeah. flipping the script. So he gives us a list of like the poor in spirit, yeah. those who are mourning and weeping, uh, the, those who are meek and humble yeah. and forgiving and who give mercy when it's not require, required <clears throat> and don't get what they deserve, right? Yeah. And it and almost like, seems it's like, because uh, we get to the insulted, it's like those who are trampled upon yes. as you go through. It's like, and he says, they've got it good. Yes. And, and so then you have to ask, why? What? what it, Because it can't be those things intrinsically. Yeah. Those things are miserable. Weeping is sad. Like poverty is hard. Um, 
he, he, being humble and meek and trampled on and persecuted, th these are all negative realities. Like we yeah. do everything we can to avoid them. So it can't be intrinsically in that that the blessing lies. The question is, how can they be blessed and still have all those negative things going on in their life? What scenario, what realm makes sense of that? How could there be blessing in the middle of all of that? That's the yeah. question. And Jesus is intentionally rocking our world. He's breaking the categories. And he's turning everything upside down and he's disorienting our way of thinking about life. And he's doing that on purpose. That's yeah. the whole thing, repent. Change the way you're thinking, change the way you're living, change the way you orient to reality. The kingdom of God is at hand. And I think the the problem with, well, I mean, it's not a problem, but it's the reality that's like, it's the, it's the tension, the confusion, the frustration of the right. list that Jesus puts out is he doesn't say, blessed are the game changers, right? Like he doesn't say, blessed are those who really make a difference. Blessed are those who, who lead the thing. And so there's this feeling in the Beatitudes, like you can't be heavenly blessed and earthly successful. Like how, how are we to understand this? Yeah. So, so, so that's the tension. And Jesus leaves it there. He puts it right on the table and, he, and he's messing with us because everybody thinks, you know, what I want to do is be successful, be educated, make a lot of money, have comfort, have security, build a life. That's, that's yeah. where it's at. That's where it's, that's what matters. And Jesus is saying at the end of the day, none of that really matters. And, and there is a blessedness in the life of the kingdom of God that you can have, even if none of those things happen. It, and, and there, there's, there's a, um, there's a life and a power and a blessing that can be even at the very bottom of life. You still have it. That's, that's the paradox. Now, so the question is, can you, what do you do if you are earthly blessed? Like, in other words, I've got a big bank account. I've got a good job. I've got, you know, a little kingdom that I've built for myself. Yeah. Am I disqualified from heavenly blessing? because of that, because it almost feels like that's what he's saying, right? Yeah. It, in other places, it, and Jesus is intentional in creating that tension. He says, it's very hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven, right? It's like easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich person to come into the kingdom of heaven. It's not impossible, but he's saying it's really, really hard. Why would that be? Why would that be? And I think, I think this, is, this is why. If you have something in life, if you're successful in life, you, you're part of the haves, not the have-nots, right? You're, yeah. But you have the haves. You can easily confuse what you've built as something that matters to God. Hmm. In other words, we, we build a resume, and it impresses other people. But when it comes to God, it doesn't matter at all. God didn't care how much money you have. He doesn't know, care what office you have in the building, whether it's the corner office on the top floor or not. He doesn't care... You know what I mean? None of that matters and has merit before God. What God counts and looks, uh, looks upon, what God values is a humble heart, a contrite heart, a surrendered heart, someone who understands their spiritual emptiness and brokenness before God, who throws themselves on the mercy and grace of God. That's, those yeah. are spiritually, that's the spiritual heart that God can bless. Those who weep and mourn over their sin and who are empty and know it. And the great danger, Eric, is it's kind of like uh, Facebook, like where we, there's a tendency on Facebook or social media or Instagram or whatever to go and posture yourself as if that's who you really are. But you know, there's a disconnect mm -hmm. between reality and the way you portray yourself. Yeah. What it seems like in the kingdom of the world, you can posture yourself as a certain kind of person. I'm wealthy, successful, I have it together, I have all this stuff going for me. And really at the end of the day, that's a disguise and it's a mask for the deep spiritual, empty, yeah. broken nothingness, which is really what's real. Can we talk about that posturing for yeah. a second? Because I think that's a really an important insight to, to recognize that like we, I think especially today, live in a culture that is based on posturing. Yes, and image, the, image management. Exactly, and the Sermon on the Mount speaks directly to that with the phrase, blessed are the meek. Like how can someone follow Christ's call to meekness 
and still seek to be in any way successful, or should they seek to be successful, in an age that's so dependent on self-promotion, right? Like everything yeah. today is driven by self-promotion. Self-promotion, advance your brand. Totally, yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Well, so this this is very this is very interesting because because Jesus, a, a, a meek person, a meek person understands um, that they're not a big deal. A meek person understands um, that much of what they have in life, they, it's, you know, it's just a, it's by grace. Um, they were given it. Um, the opportunities they got, they didn't create, but they took advantage of. But it's, you know, it's just the favor of God or the way the world works. Like in other words, you don't take a lot of credit for, for, for the things that are you have in life, right? In in many ways, like if we're prideful, which is the opposite of meekness, yeah. It, when we're prideful, we're kind of plagiarizing, if you will, because we're taking credit for something God gave us in the first place. Mm. God gave us all of our giftedness. He gave us our personality. He gave us our opportunities. He gave us our life, and so much of that is we don't ever shouldn't ever take credit for, right? So a meek person understands that and so therefore doesn't want to glamorize or 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 become prideful or self-promoting in that sense. So it is an upside down thing. Yeah. Now the question is how do you how can you be assertive and uh, still, you know, bold and courageous and doing the things yeah. you're called to do. And and I think that the tension it comes down to this is is not confusing the things I accomplish and the things I get done and with with uh, a credit on my core yeah. identity because it is really all by grace. And again, it's paradigm shifting, right? It is not the way the world normally works. Yeah. And Jesus is saying in the kingdom of heaven, what God really esteems and values is the person who has an honest appraisal of their own brokenness, their own weakness, their own sinfulness, their own emptiness, um, who is willing to risk everything for Jesus, knowing that there's nothing in here, yeah. you know? And, and, then, and then everything I get in life is really, it's a gift. It's a sweet gift of God. You said that meekness is the opposite of pride. How is meekness different than humility then? Like, what does that, what think, does that look like? I think there's synonyms. Um, oh. Humility is like um, a way of, of um, self-concept, right? Thinking of oneself. Meekness is probably the disposition that goes along with that, okay. right? So it's the, as that humility starts to manifest itself, it, it, will, it will exhibit itself in a meek behavior, a gentleness, um, a, a humble bearing in the world. So I think they're connected. Yeah. One's probably more the fruit and one's more the root. You know, humility flows out in terms of meekness. Is there a person in your life that as you, as you think about that, just like when it comes to meekness that you'd point to, be like, yeah, this is what, what meekness looks like? Because I think a lot of people are afraid of that, right? Like I, when I think of meekness, I can't help, even though I know that it's a wrong view, I can't help but think of Piglet. From like Winnie the Pooh, right? Where right. like I think yeah. of that famous scene where his house is taken from him and he goes, oh, what am I supposed to do? And like he feels right. really bad. And it's right. like it just meekness yeah. is unfortunately because it's a, uh, it rhymes with weakness is often thought right. to be similar. But right. I, don't, I don't think that's the case. No, no. What, so Jesus, is, someone you've seen? Jesus is the most meek person ever. And he's not weak. Yeah. Right? He clears the temple. He confronts injustice. He is bold and courageous, and yet he's never full of himself. Hmm. And he's never entitled. And he's willing to defer and give up his rights for the sake of others. And so there's actually a courageousness to a meek life. And so Jesus embodies that. You asked if I know anybody uh, like that. I, the person who comes to mind is a professor I had in college. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, Dr. Greg uh, Kauser. And um, just one of the most um, godly, gentle, sweet, um, and, and yet bold, courageous, mm. uh, diligent, uh, astute, brilliant people. Um, but there's a tenderness and a self-forgetfulness mm. that, that, is, that is beautiful. It's Christ in him. And I, I admire that in him a lot. So he was one of those guys that I just wanted to be like, you know? Yeah. 
uh, when I when one day when I grow up, you know. Is but it, yeah, it's funny. There's but yeah, it's it's not it's not. I, I think when we think of these traits, as we're not looking at people that are cowering or who are fear based, and you know, Piglet's always stuttering, did, 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 you know, stuttering, and and just scared in life. That's yeah. not the picture. It's 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 someone who who just doesn't think much of themselves. It, it's not like you think of your you think of yourself as nothing. It's just you just forget about yourself. It's, yeah. it's you've just forgotten, and and then you're free to just love and engage and do what's right, and and press forward at the task at hand, and move forward with courage and strength. But you, you're just not preoccupied with yourself, and I think that's what meekness is. Mm. As we as we think about the beatitudes as a whole, what they're really doing is they're setting a standard right? Mm -hmm. Like it's a new standard for the kingdom, for, for spirituality. As I, as I look at this list, I think a lot of people, uh, be listening to this in their cars or in their kitchen, uh, they're thinking about themselves or their children or their small group. How do we lead ourselves and our children and our friends, anyone we're discipling toward, toward these ways of living? Yeah. Well, you think about it. We spend a whole lot of our time raising kids and preparing people for life so they can be quote unquote success, successful, right? Yeah. So they can pay the bills and make money and contribute to society and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of effort and intentionally intentionality aimed at that. Um, I think what Christ is calling us to is to remember that that's like, those are all good things. You know, they're helpful and getting ready for life, but the ultimate things, the things that really matter are on the inside. And who we become is more important than anything we do or accomplish or achieve in our lives. Who we are is what really matters. And you think of like the difference between Saul and David, right? Saul was handsome. He's tall. He's a warrior. He's successful. Like everybody says, that's the guy we want to follow. Yeah. And he's on the normal list of blessed, right? He's yeah. got it all. He's rugged, handsome. He's The women are chasing after him. It's like, that's the guy, right? Yeah. And then, and then, but God says the Lord doesn't look at the outside. The Lord looks at the heart and he picks this small, ruddy, unaccomplished shepherd boy and says, that guy's heart, there's something in there that's worth, the, see, that's the upside yeah. down kingdom, right? It's, it's, it's the flipping of the script. It's, there's something inside mm. that actually matters most to God. And that is worth tending and caring for. And so as parents, like with kids, we want to address behaviors and we want to prepare people with the skills that they have to succeed in life. But what's more important is to tend to the heart and look at character and look at, are we developing teachable, gentle, yeah. love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, yeah, yeah, faithfulness, yeah. general self-control, the, 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 the kind of surrendered openness and vulnerability and unpretentious self-forgetfulness that is the kind of heart that is most receptive and full of the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. That's, you must become like a little child if you're to enter into the kingdom. There's, no, there's nothing sophisticated there. Yeah. There's nothing pretentious, no posturing, no accolades, no pomp and circumstance, just simple childlike trust. And like the, the great danger is that we outgrow that, right? And we get sucked into the machine and we think we've got to posture and be all of this. And when, what God really wants at the end is a childlike heart, not a childish heart, but a childlike heart, right? Not immaturity, but, but the, simplicity, the simplicity of surrender and humility and trust and faith. Mm. Philip, that's, that's where the kingdom is. Yeah. One last question for you. Yeah. Someone's reading this list right now, let's just say. They look over the list and they say, that's not me. They look at those who mourn and they're like, that's not me, I'm not someone who mourns. Uh, they look at maybe the peacekeep, peacemakers and they're like, I'm not really a, a peacemaker or any of these types of things. What, what would you have to say to them? Hmm. I think, I think Christ is challenging us to see that the way up is actually down. The, the, thing, the thing that everyone on this list has is there are people that are giving up things, people that have nothing, 
people that are, are surrendered to their brokenness, their emptiness. The greatest risk, I think, in life is that the people who have hold on to what they have as if it matters. When Jesus is saying, if you would just let it go and realize you don't have anything anyway, then I can pick you up. Hmm. He's the rescuer. And I, and I it's, use another analogy. The, you know the, the, the story of the prodigal sons, right? The, the, the older brother who's righteous and living and doing everything right, and he's in the field, and he's mad at his father because he doesn't get what he deserves. And the younger brother who runs away and squanders everything and then just comes back with his tail between his legs. The one who comes home with his tail between his legs, who squandered everything and knows it, is the one who can walk right into the house yeah. and be home with the father and step into the blessings of the father's home, right? Yeah. It's the older brother who was doing everything right, who thought he had something worthwhile, who held on to it as if it mattered, and that kept him on the outside. Mm. And so the, the great, I think what Jesus is doing is he's saying the things you think you've amassed, the things you think are building your resume, that build you up, that make you worthwhile, that make you somebody, at the end of the day, all of those things are liabilities. And the, and the great thing we have to learn is that this list is us. We are poor in spirit. We just pretend we're not. We are mourning because the world is broken and we're broken. Mm -hmm. And we just pretend we're not. We turn the other, we turn on Netflix and we just try to ignore the fact of, that we're mourning and broken. You know, that we are meek. We have, there's nothing really to our name. Mm -hmm. that, that's who we are. We come in empty, and, and all the games we play to try to pretend we've got something to offer. I mean, how freeing is it, Eric, to come to God and say, I got nothing, hmm. and to be loved, broken, empty, with nothing. Hmm. Then you have nothing to fear, nothing to lose. You don't have to hide because you're loved and accepted and blessed, the kingdom comes upon you when you got nothing. Yeah. How, there's no better news than that. But the problem is in order to get there, I've got to let go of stuff. Yeah. All the things I pretend matter that make me better than the next guy or gal, that make me a cut above, that allow me to hold on to a sense of pride and a sense of self that is self-generated and self-made, all of that's a liability. I consider it rubbish, Paul says, that I might have Christ. I gotta get, it. it's all a liability. My righteousness is filthy rags. Nothing matters except I'm loved by Jesus. And that, it, I mean, if, you, if we could just believe that, that that's true, that God is not impressed with anything else except for Jesus, and Jesus has covered me, and therefore I can be blessed. Mm. It can never be taken away. I can never lose it. I never have to strive for it, and I don't have to achieve it. It just falls by grace through faith in Christ, and the blessedness of the kingdom of the heavens is mine. Mm. That's a beautiful, that's a good, that's good news. Yes, it is. It's a gospel. It is. It's good news. Amen. So which way are you going? Are you going down or are you going up? Because the way up starts by going down. We hope you enjoyed this conversation. And if you did, be sure to check out the message that went along with it. If you're enjoying our conversations on Living the Message, be sure to leave us a like and subscribe. Give us a five-star rating if you're on iTunes. Uh, and leave even a comment. We'd love to read them. We always appreciate the encouragement. We hope that you were encouraged equipped and enabled to now go and live the message.